Hello dear subscriber and welcome to the lesson 2, to this lesson 2 main components of centrifugal pumps of the course uh, centrifugal pumps basic level. Uh, prior to enter in any equation in any kind of curve or things such like these, we will first uh, describe the main components of centrifugal pumps. I believe that it is mm, needed to understand what is a centrifugal pump, what are the main parts. If we strip a pump, we can separate the centrifugal pump in two main parts, the rotating element and the stationary element. The rotating element, of course, is the impeller and the shaft and all the other components that rotate with the train. And the stationary element is casing and bearing housing and others. Pump assemble. We have here a centrifugal pump driven by an electric motor. Here we have the pump, this is an end tap type of pump, foot mounted because the supports are located at the foot of the pump. We have here the motor, this is as I mentioned before an electrical motor. We can also have any other kind of driver such as a gas turbine, a steam turbine, or hydraulic drive. Here we have the coupling, and here we have the base plate, the base plate, we stand both the, the pump and the driver. And this is a single stage pump. We have here this, the stationary part of the pump. pump. We have here the casing, the volute, here this is the volute, the fluid enters the pump through the impeller height here and this is the pump suction flange to connect the suction pipe to the pump the fluid pass through the impeller and exit radially to the to the shaft the other element that we will have here is the rotating train the rotating elements the main element is the shaft at the end of the shaft is affixed the impeller the impeller has many blades to convey the fluid from the suction to the discharge transmitting energy to the fluid so at the exit of the impeller since energy has been already transmitted to the fluid we will have uh, a fluid uh, moving at higher velocity and with a higher pressure. But we need to convert, to transform velocity into pressure. We need to, to, to transform the kinetic energy into pressure energy. Why? Because pressure losses depends on square velocity, depends on square flow rate. We have here the bearings supporting the shaft, the rotating shaft. This is the bearing housing. Bearings can be lubricated with grease or with oil. Well, we have here the impeller, and also an end suction pump. We, we already have seen what a volute was. And we will see here another kind of device to transform velocity into pressure, diffusers. So we have here the, the volute, the area is increasing in, in an spiral shape, and what we have here is first, this is the impeller contained inside the diffuser. The diffuser plays the same role as the volute, Please note that area is increase, increasing along the flow. For the same purpose, to transform velocity 
into pressure. Diffusers are normally used in multi-stage pumps, and the volume is normally used in single-stage pump. We will see now a multi-stage pump. We have here the diffuser, multi-stage pump. We have several stages composed of an impeller and its corresponding diffuser. The flow enters through the suction pipe, here, pass through the first impeller, diffuser, and then to the impeller eye of the second impeller, to the discharge of impeller, and so on. And move through all the rotating train until reaching the discharge nozzle. In this case, we have a special, a special type of pump with an intermediate bleeding. We are extracting a fluid through this bleeding at a lower pressure from the third stage of the pump, and the rest of the flow pass through from the fourth stage to the final stage and exit the pump at a higher pressure. This is a typical application, of the, or this is a, a pump typically used for boiler feed water pumps. Please note that this pump is center line mounted. This pump is center line mounted because the fluid that is passing through the through the pump is a hot fluid, body fluid water in this case. The pump we have seen before, the single stage pump, was an overhand pump because the pillar was hanging, were suspended at the end of a shaft. But now, what we have here is a between bearings uh, pump. You have one bearing here, another bearing here, and in between we have the impellers. This is the usual configuration for, for multi-stage pump and for, for other pumps. This will be covered on the course types of pumps. This pump is a channel ring pump because it is composed of several sectional rings. Every sectional ring includes an impeller and a diffuser. There are other types of pumps considering the, the casing arrangement, for example, barrel pumps or axial split, uh, axial split pumps. And so on. this will be covered in the course I mentioned. Well, impellers. We the, the most common impeller is the closed impeller. Blades of the impeller are covered by two walls. This type of impellers are normally used for clean fluid. The, the, this is a uh, semi-open impeller. Only one wall, the back wall, is the one that we see uh, on this picture. This type of impeller can be used for killing fluids and from fluids also containing solids. And this is uh, an open impeller. There is no, practically, there is no walls. Other impeller types. This is a Francis impeller, a closed Francis impeller. It, it is uh, already a mixed flow uh, type impeller. This is also a mixed flow impeller, but semi open. This one it is a mixed flow impeller, also semi-open, but please note that it is a little bit different than, than the previous one. This is normally used first. This is tailor made. This is an engineering pump. See that how the blades are welded to the hub. Normally, the, the, this pump is used for, for special applications, for example, in, boiler, in power plants for circulating water pumps, delivering high flow rates, um, 
low heads. This another impeller that we are seeing now on the screen is a, a double suction impeller, a back-to-back -back impeller. It is in fact two impeller join uh, on the back, two impellers. It, this is used, this is used for for some kind of some kind of application. For example, those applications requiring low values of MPSH. For example, for uh, cooling water applications, pumping cooling water. This is an axial impeller. We can see here the axial impeller inside this axial pump. And many others. Well, the main thing here to understand how a pump behaves, the most important type of impeller, the most important classification is the division in radial impeller, mixed flow impellers and axial impeller, based on the direction of the flow through the impeller. This is the main division of impeller. The, starting from this point, you, you can find a lot of different ty types of impellers for different applications, but equations will be applicable to the classification I mentioned. Uh, I mentioned radial, mixed flow, and axial type impellers. Bearings. Bearings, the function of the bearings is support the, the shaft, the rotating shaft, and support all loads that, that are generated uh, due to, to the rotation uh, of chaff on all the, the force involved in a, in, in a rotating machinery uh, device, in, in, a motor, in, in a rotating machine. In this case, we have a roller bearing composed of cylinders, in this case, and this is ball bearing. Uh, a ball bearing type. Uh, the lubrication of, of bearing is a very important issue. For example, roller bearings and ball bearings ca can be lubricated by grease. Bearings are normally sealed to avoid the, 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 the leakage or the entrance of dust. And this is a multi stage pump. We have here hydrodynamic burnings. There is no contact be between the shaft and the burning, between solid or metallic surfaces when the pump is running, when the shaft is rotating. There exists a parameter named energy density. The energy density is obtained by multiplying the pump power by the rotational speed. Depending on the value of this parameter, we will use either uh, force lubrication or non-force lubrication for high velocities or high values of pressure, we would need to, to have an external so, uh, source of uh, lubricating oil. Normally, an external oil, oil skid, including pumps, filters, oil tank, etc., is used to inject the oil in the hydrodynamic bearings. Thrust bearings are other type of bearings. We, we, we see different shapes or different types. This one is the Kingsbury bearing. This type of bearing always needs an external lubrication source, uh, I mean force lubrication. And to the right we have uh, roller bearings uh, and ball bearings to be used as thrust. Bearing. These variants are forcing to support the axial thrust, not only the radial loads. 
that are the one supported by radial bearings, by hydrodynamic bearings, roller bearings, ball bearings. This type of bearing should also support the axial load coming from the axial thrust phenomena. Since the pressure at the pump discharge is higher than the pressure at suction discharge, this pressure push the pump to the side of the suction. This phenomenon will not be covered on this course, but in, a, in an advanced course. And finally, packing and seals. Gland packing. The gland packing is used to avoid leakage from the pumping fluid side to the dry side. The shelf is rotating. The liquid, the liquid at the pumped fluid side is trying to go out through the clearance of the rotating shaft with the, with the static part. So we should put something there to avoid leakage. The cheapest method is to use gland packing. Gland packing is normally made of soft material. Several packing rings are pressed by this gland, forming a seal that avoids the leakage of the, of the fluid out of the pump. There will be always leakage through the, through the gland packing. Always will be leakage. Three or four droplets per second is a normal level of leakage. Sometimes the, the packing rings are over tightened by, by the maintenance people trying to avoid <laughs> leakage. Please, leakage, there will be always leakage, leakage through the, the gland packing. This is normal. Do not <laughs> do that. To a time a lower level of leakage, we can use or the, the mechanical seals are used. Here you have a mechanical seal. Of course, there are more components. It is more complex, so the price will be higher. But you won't have visible leakage. What is a mechanical seal? We, a mechanical seal is always composed by a rotating part and a stationary part. The gap between the stationary phase and the rotating phase will control the leakage between the, through the seal. You have here several types of mechanical seals, single mechanical seals and cartridge mechanical seals. Well, this is all for today. I will be waiting for you in the next lesson covering another interesting issue on centrifugal pumps. So, goodbye.